What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today is going to be an awesome chest workout. And the first movement will actually be on the Smith machine. It's going to be the regular bench press. It's going to be a new exercise I'm doing. You already have seen me doing the incline bench press and the decline bench press on the Smith machine, but I'm doing a different chest rotation now, just a flat bench press. Why? Because I'm training alone most of the time and for a regular bench press you would need a spotter. And because I love the regular bench press I'm still going to do it but then using the Smith machine as my spotter basically so I never will fail and then won't be able to get out of it. That's not what you want. So let's just get started with this. As usual we're going to do a few warm-up sets first. Not fatiguing the muscle but simply warming it up and then do two working sets at the very end. So let's do it. All right, so this is the first exercise of the day, and it's a Smith machine bench press. As I mentioned, I like using the Smith machine because it allows you to be your own spotter. And with the training schedule I have now, you do a few warm-ups, then you don't need a spotter at all. But during the working sets, you know, a working set is defined as a set where you have to go to failure. At least that's why what I like to do during the working sets because then you know exactly how many reps you can do with how much weight and what you have to do then is try to improve your performance the next time so you have to go to failure to know where you're at and if you go to failure on a regular bench press without a spotter well then you're pretty much messed you up because you can't get the barbell up anymore here it doesn't really matter you're always safe you feel confident and you can do whatever you want in terms of the weight and you will never really mess yourself up in that way injuries are also uh, much less frequent because here you're very safe in terms of spotting yourself but anyway as I mentioned, we're doing the warm-ups right now. Usually the first few sets are more than five reps because the chest and the shoulders and even the triceps and the elbows, they need to be warmed up properly before hitting a heavy weight. So the first few sets are like 10 reps and eight reps and six reps and maybe two five reppers. And then once I feel like the five reps I did uh, you know, it's quite heavy, but the one after that, I wouldn't be able to finish above 10 reps. That is my working set. So this is going to be my final uh, warm up, really getting used to the heavy weights. That's what the warm up is really for, to get the blood in the muscle and to get used to the weight that is ever increasing until you hit the working set. And then it is time for the working set right here. So this is about 150 kilos and this is by the way a, a few weeks ago so a bit closer to the end of my olympia prep still building up my strength after the olympia you should do that really slowly in order to prevent injuries because right after a contest when you rebound you might feel very strong because you're then able to eat a lot but then your tendons and your joints are still as weak as they were before you just feel stronger so you really want to emphasize the perfect form here especially when you're going as heavy as you can so that was working set number one it was the heaviest working set i hit about 10 reps there you know i want to hit around 8 to 12 reps in the first working set that's my first rep range a true hypertrophy rep range and the second rep range is usually around 15 to 20 however here i only hit 14 reps so the next time i do this i hit the exact same weight with the goal of hitting at least 15 reps so i can actually get into that different rep range because the stronger you get across many rep ranges the more development you will create in the muscle that you're working 
All right, guys, the next movement is going to be the chest press. So this is a plate loaded, free weight chest press. So you might think, well, it's still a flat press. So it's the same as the bench press I just did. But that's not the case because with the bench press, your hands are fixed to the bar. So the stretch is maximized, but your contraction isn't. Here, you can maximize the contraction because your hands are actually moving close together, following the natural path of how the chest wants to contract. So that's a big difference. Plus, bodybuilding is all about hitting the same muscle from different angles. And every single machine hits it automatically from a different angle, especially when it's two converging handles instead of just a static bar. So let's get started with the first warm up. All right, so as I said, this again is kind of like a flat exercise. Just imagine laying on your back. It would be not an incline, not a decline, just a flat press, just like the swing machine bench press we just did. So you might think, well, what is the difference? Why would you do two flat presses in the same workout? Well, you have to look at the up application of the machine, the Smith machine, your hands and your arms stay in the same plane. They don't move, they don't converge, they don't diverge, they just stay in the same plane up and down. However, with the chest press, as you can see, these handles converge as you push forward, allowing you to contract the chest in a very different way compared to the Smith machine. And also here, the tension is different as well. With the Smith machine, what you don't want to do is go all the way up because there it is very difficult to achieve a good contraction because your hands can't move together. Here, however, I really do want to achieve a proper stretch so you can see if you compare this movement to the Smith machine bench press that my arms are going straighter here than compared to the Smith machine bench press because I want to achieve a better squeeze here, which you can't achieve on the bench press. So I see a lot of people who kind of do like a paused rep scheme on the bench press, but they put the pause in the wrong place. Uh, range of motion and uh, wrong part of the range of motion because they put it at the very top where you're not only pausing but also resting because all the weight is resting on your joints that is not what you want what you want is to actually pause at the bottom a little bit if you're going to do a pause rep but what you don't want to do at all during a bench press is stretch out the arms so the tension goes on the elbows you always want to go above 80% and then go down again. So never go to a full 100% extension because if you do that, the tension is lost from the chest and transferred to the bones. And that's not what a bodybuilder wants. So we just hit one working set, uh, which was actually too light to stay within the eight to 12 rep range. So what I do, because it's fully loaded up with these plates right now, is add some bands to make it even more difficult to hit a heavier rep range. Okay, the next exercise is going to be a true free weight movement. This time, once again, a different angle. So from a flat angle, from the first movement and the chest press, we're going to an incline angle, but the slightest incline possible because we want to target the upper chest and not the front delts. Of course, you always hit the front delts on training chest, but you want to minimize that and shift that tension from the front delts to the chest, which is why I'm using the minimal inclined version on this dumbbell incline press. So let's get it done. All right, so the next movement is going to be a true free weight movement, one that I love to do, one of my favorite movements for chest of all time. I've been doing it since the very beginning, just like a regular bench press, but one could argue that the dumbbell press is even better. And the incline version here is very different from the two exercises we just did because it's an incline angle. And a different angle to hit the chest means you're hitting muscle fibers just a bit different allowing you to develop the chest in a more full and complete manner. So here I'm also doing some warm-ups, which is very important for the dumbbell press in my opinion, because here the warm-up is about three things. It's about getting blood into the muscles, it's about getting used to the weight, but also getting used to the movement of the dumbbells. That is also very important because here each arm is an individual asset in the movement, as in if one arm is weaker than the other or you're feeling pain in one arm or and not in the other, you will find out in an exercise like this because here they move independently. So on all other 
exercises you move them both at the same time on the machine the chest press is a bit of an exception but this free weight movement that tells you for sure if one arm is weaker than the other and once you get used to the balance once you get used to the range of motion then you hit the working set with the weight you can hit about 8 to 12 reps with once again and this is 60 kilos hitting about 8 to 9 reps really controlling the weight on the way down which is very important especially on the double press if you want to be a bodybuilder for as long as possible you always want to control the movements to prevent injuries from happening i haven't had any injury in the upper body in my entire life just little uh pains here and there which everybody gets but then you treat those before it gets worse and the only way to you know prevent severe injury is to control the weight at all times so you are forcing yourself not to go too heavy because if you go way too quickly using momentum you use way too much weight and that is too much for the muscles to bear potentially all right guys the next movement the last one for the chest is going to be the atx bell squat machine and we're going to do dips on it one of my favorite movements to do after having done all the chest movements is dips because that maxes out the stretch on the chest you don't have to focus much on the contraction because you already did that throughout the workout so this is going to be the stretch out the pumped up muscle and the better the pump the better the stretch so let's run off with the body weight first and then add some weights to this machine let's do it all right, so the dip movement is to me a great movement to do at least after, after having done two or three chest exercises already. Why? Because as you can see, this range of motion almost looks like it's incomplete. Why am I not going all the way to the top? Because the top motion here is mostly going to be the triceps, even a bit of the front delts, and not as much for the chest. So what I want to do here is the chest is fully pumped up, it's warmed up, it's filled with blood. So you want to go down as far as you can to emphasize that stretch, because the chest is is pumped up from all the previous exercises it is no use trying to contract the chest here at the top while that is a very inefficient way of contracting the chest which we already did in the previous movements especially on that uh, chest press for example so what you want to do here is go all the way down feel that maximum stretch and your upper arm should be at least parallel to the floor if not just a bit lower to achieve that maximum stretch in the chest and here i'm also hitting a drop set first going to fill your with weight on this atx belt dip machine then removing the weight and going with my body weight until hitting failure to add intensity to the workout all right now we finished off the chest and it's time for the triceps the triceps will all remain a uh, point I need to work on. The bigger, the better, of course. And on the front of a bicep pose, it looks great to have a big tricep hang. However, the first movement will always be the rope push down for me or a push down variation to warm up the joint, to warm up the triceps before hitting more heavier movements. So let's do this one first. All right, so for chest, we only did four movements. A lot of people like to do five movements, but in my opinion, if you do that for way too long, you're going to be overtraining. And a lot of people don't believe in that term, but in my opinion, you should just focus on a few exercises that you truly feel work in the chest and maximize your strength and rep ranges on those instead of spreading yourself too thin over too many exercises of which half or at least one or two you don't really feel in the chest and that's what we call junk volume volume you're you know you're using to train the muscle that is not actually going to bring you muscle gain so all you your body then has to do is recover and be fatigued from that extra volume that doesn't bring you muscle mass that is a waste of time so that we're not going to do that we're only sticking to exercises that we truly feel and this is one of those examples the rope tricep push down you can see when i go all the way down you can see the squeeze and triceps existing because of the striations uh appearing and this just feels really amazing to warm up those triceps or to make sure a lot of blood is in there to make all the other movements after this work that much better 
Okay, now we warm up with the rope tricep push down. It's time for a slightly heavier movement. It's going to be a wide grip tricep push down. And the wider grip, the wider the grip, the more on the inside the tension will shift. And this is the inside of the tricep. The tricep thickness will be targeted more, also more of a long head because of the stretch at the top. So uh, I really love the feeling of this one. Great mind muscle connection and just an awesome movement. So let's do this. So this is a very nice push down as well. So we did the rope push down, which is basically grabbing the attachment as close, uh, you know, with your hands as close uh, uh, to each other as possible. And this one is the reverse. You're putting your hands pretty much as far away from each other as possible. Obviously, not literally, but on this pull down, a uh, let pull down bar, I'm using it as a tricep push down, holding it as uh, wide as possible on the straight part. And the wider the grip here, the more to the inside, I am able to squeeze a tricep. And guess what? It's the inside and the long head of the tricep that gives you the most mass, not just on your triceps, but on your entire arms. So if you want bigger triceps, if those are your weak points, doing exercises like this in combination with an overhead movement with great mind muscle connection is the way to really get growth in those triceps, especially in the long head, which is what I will always need because the biceps are a strong point and the triceps will always need to catch up. So you might as well then pick exercises that really suit your weak points to make sure they grow as much as possible, but then only pick exercises you actually feel in the muscle. Like this one, for example, I really feel the squeeze. I feel the mind-muscle connection. When I go all the way up, I feel the stretch. When I go all the way down, I feel the squeeze. And that allows me to put all my emphasis on that part of the muscle instead of using other muscles uh, to assist in the movement. So this second working set is actually a bit different compared to the first. Here I'm leaning over a bit more, making it just a bit easier because here my... Uh, body weight is helping pressing down the weight just a little bit but at the same time it helps emphasize the stretch as well all right the last tricep movement is going to be with a kettlebell normally i would be doing this with a dumbbell for example but the feel on the kettlebell is just amazing it feels less stressful on the shoulder and elbow joint especially the elbow joint and more towards the tricep, which is where you want the tension to go. So it's going to be basically a skull crusher, but then the longer version to stretch out the long head of the tricep. And it's going to be with a kettlebell instead of a dumbbell. So let's do it. All right, normally I would hit this movement with dumbbells, but when you're using dumbbells, the stresses in the arm more easily go to the elbow and the elbow tendon, at least in my experience and opinion, compared to a kettlebell. Now this might seem weird to a lot of bodybuilders because when do we ever use these kettlebells? Well, personally, I like to use them for a double uh, bench rows where you uh, have your chest supported bench in an incline where two kettlebells are on the floor, you pull them upwards and pretty much do a double a row like that feels really amazing and it feels more comfortable than a dumbbell in my opinion, more easy to adjust the grip. But this one is one that I haven't seen for a long time until I saw John Meadows do this one pretty much a year ago or something. And I've been doing this from time to time, but I will be implementing this one more often in my training plan because with the dumbbells, I was starting to get a little bit of pain in the left elbow joint, the tendon, which is very annoying when you want to go as heavy as possible. You don't want to be distracted by any pain. So guys, if you have any elbow pain, any elbow tendonitis, and you can't really use the dumbbells, and you have kettlebells at home, definitely try this movement. It's the way that the weight of the kettlebell is distrib distributed over the range of motion when doing this movement that allows it to go way more to the muscle instead of the joint. It just feels more natural to move it like this. The grip feels better as well, and it just feels like a more efficient and effective movement for the triceps 
compared to using a dumbbell. The dumbbell all, you know, usually gets in the way or just has an awkward grip. Also, the grip there is neutral, and this one kind of looks like an underhand grip, which makes it even easier to contract and to stretch that long head of the tricep. So this is the first working set, going as heavy as I can. But with triceps, it's important that you should be able to go heavy, Com uh, combine it with another set that goes light so you get a lot of blood in there and a lot of mechanical tension from the heavy set but the problem is that when you're going heavy on the triceps that you do get those joint and tendon pain so trust me guys if you want big triceps you want to be able to train heavy so at least you know in the rep range of eight around eight reps hitting failure then without pain in the elbows and then hitting another set using at least well at least 12 to 15 plus reps are going to feel you that way because then in the first set you get a lot of mechanical tension which means getting the most tension you can on the tricep muscles uh, causing hypertrophy or muscle growth and then after that putting as much blood in there more lactic acid and other metabolic growth factors to make those muscles grow it's that combination that to me made my muscles grow the most compared to all the other years i've been training before this so the last off season i've had i've been training this way every single time and trust me this is the most gains I've made, at least the most qualitative gains I've made in my life, especially after already having some muscle mass before, it's rare to then build a lot more after that. But trust me, it's the training that can make the difference. Train hard or don't go at all. Okay guys, that was the chest and tricep workout. Some basic movements, yet very effective for fixing weak points in the tricep, but also making the chest nice and full because the chest can never be big enough. And don't forget to check out VintageGenetics.com, for example, for this vintage gym stringer. And uh, I just really want to thank you for the incredible support you've given me, especially with Black Friday, with the Olympia, with the New Year's discount. It was all amazing. And we will keep investing in new items for the store. Once again, thank you for watching. And don't forget to stay golden.